I do apologise. They are very, very interesting. We were just so busy that the whole thing just kind of gummed up and stopped. So it shows you what's happening. Um, the internet hasn't quite got the terrestrial television, but nevertheless, uh, fantastic stuff. Hope you're all coming back here to see me. And um, no doubt tonight's show will end up in two parts. So you'll have to watch two videos as the week goes on. Can everybody see this? And hopefully you can still hear us and we'll get back in business as soon as possible. So there we are. Little bit of a disappearance and um, then we're back. If you've just joined us, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're watching Scotty McClue and we are, of course, live big style. Uh, Andrew's viewing the video. So lovely to see you. Oh, lovely viewing the video now. Tap to invite her to join. Steph McElveen is watching. What's your opinion? of modern day reality tv shows uh, i don't know I'm, I'm kind of the jury's still out about reality television i have to say back in the room says christopher james Matt. yes it just all gummed up there chris and just changed so you might have two videos to watch tonight folks but there you are you're back says david fraser yes you're still lovely says rab hill thank you rab very flattering what about doing a podcast says David Gardner. Now, what do you mean by a podcast, David? Because there's uh, different qualifications for podcasts now. Hello, Scotty Big Chap, says Steph McElhenney. It's lovely to see you. What's your opinion on single mothers with council houses? We haven't heard you talk about them for a while, says Gary Irvin. Absolutely, same as always. I think if people are taking the mints out the system, the only thing is, since we used to do the Scott FM shows, We've had the Conservatives back in, because at that time John Major was in power and was uh, struggling to hang on to power at the time, a little bit like Mrs May is now. And um, the problem that we had then, people had started to buy their houses and what have you, and the single mothers were going a bit bananas at the time. But we've had this so-called austerity since then. Now that's been very, 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 very bad for the whole country. Also, it's political. There was no need for any austerity. It was really to get money off you so that they could bail out the banks who had messed up big time. So you had old ladies selling their wedding rings to pay their electricity bills, you got these little gold stalls and supermarkets and things like that, and um, handing in the rings and what have you. Shocking, shocking, shocking. So I think there's a lot of shame about um, the politics of the last 10, 11 years. Did you do, Scotty McLean says, watch. Good evening, Scotty, says Alex Robertson. Evening, Alex, lovely to have you with us. Top man, now I've got you back, says Erica. Joe Joseph's watching. Did you do, Joe? Take your bonnet out, Scotty, says John Kullock. There we are, there are a little bit of a peat going on there, but there's the bonnet off, you've seen it now? I've shown you the lot, that's it. The system's broken, Scotty, and it will be for some time. Uh, so there you are. Yes, I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Neil Mills was back with us. Lovely, lovely to have you back with us, Neil. Absolutely. Uh, take the audio from these shows and package them up as podcasts, says David. Absolutely. Now, guys, yes, we have broken the internet. Andrew Mackay, we just got so busy that everything just gummed up and stopped. I just, my face froze in front of me. But I kept chatting to you, so you should have been able to hear me. So there we are. Uh, oh, you're on again, says Neil. Of course we are. You're late, says Robert Bain. No, you're late, Robert Bain. We were on at 10 o'clock sharp, and uh, you've just arrived. So you got caught there, pal. So don't try and blame the other person when it's your fault. Excellent, Robert Bain. Tut, 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 tut. Dinky do, Scotty from Dumfries. Tis Robert Rogerson, you're a doom-hamer, Robert. Aye, that's it, Bonnie Gallowaw. Uh, Scotty, the single mothers need to learn to keep the drawers up, says Steph McAvenny. Yes, they do. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Keep your horn in your hate, me, ladies. That's what I say. Sound advice from Scotty McClue. Uh, excellent stuff. Lynn Kay's watching, dinky-doo, Lynn. Ha ah, ha you told him, says Wedge. I did indeed, Wedge. I am not having any nonsense, that guy. Oh, you're late, because he's just arrived himself. We've been on, uh, labouring in the Lord's vineyards since 10 o'clock sharp. So he can shove it. That's what I say. 
Uh, Scott Little's watching. Dinky do, Scott. Lovely to have you with us. Now, guys, if you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome. If you're wondering who's in front of you, it's Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. We're heading for an audience of two billion. Uh, I noticed the little video itself last week, about 6,000. The week before, 15,000. Rather nice. Uh, so there we are. Excellent stuff. And then, of course, it multiplies up. You're putting out on Twitter, YouTube, all the rest of it. Uh, the earth's being looked after by a higher power, but nobody has any idea what it is. They just make stuff up and call it religion. Well, Ian, there's an awful lot of people who would disagree with you, but we do like your opinion. Do you have a McClue jingle? So Richard here, yes, but I can't play it on here, Richard, because um, that's why I need pennies. I need money, 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 money flowing in. People everybody giving two pounds, five pounds, ten pounds, that sort of thing. Flowing in all the time. It should be flowing all the time. Uh, you know, because although it's a little money to you, I can do marvellous things with it. But I can't um, uh, breach the copyright and put on the Scotty McClure jingle, Dance With Your Granny and Your Auntie Fanny, right across the floor. When you get to the other side, shut the door. Um, who have we got here? What's your thoughts on cheap booze from the supermarket, Scotty? Yes, I think people need to control themselves. Remember any drug, be it alcohol, tobacco, any of the illegal drugs, they're all to make money for someone else at your expense. And because there could be addiction involved, it makes it easy for them. So think about um, coming out of the lot, cutting that one out. Uh, Council Scotty have no special housing, but they can always find a place uh, for handbags from private contracted housing. It should not be that way, says Michael Paul McMee. I agree. Evening, Scotty, says Lynn Kay. Uh, time for me to go, Scotty. Good to listen to a very wise man. I'm looking forward to your next broadcast. Take care until then, says Erica. Erica Meyer, have a lovely, lovely morning in Australia, down under there, in Oz. And uh, take care of your dear self. We'll catch up with you next week. Mwah! That's what I say. The rich have obligations to look after the poor, or the poor will have an obligation to take off the rich, says Ian Walker. Now, I love where you're coming from, Ian, but remember, there's, uh, is it 13 trillion pounds offshore at the moment? And about 450 billion slopping about um, down at Westminster. So there you are. So uh, there's very much a money tree. It just needs to be shaken by the right people. Good evening, says Andy Hughes. Evening, Andy. Erica says, and you too, Scotty. You too, Erica Angel. You take care of your dear self. Can you do live calls on Facebook, says Wadge. Yes, we looked at Messenger. The only thing is somebody called last week, was it the week before? And it just it just interrupted the show. Uh, so I took Messenger off my device for now. But yes, you could take live calls. There's no problem with that. Adam Fuller, ever thought about going back to teaching? Um, Adam I, uh, I teach all the time. I lecture, I teach, I'm very much in demand. I coach people. I um, work with very, very senior people about their presentation and advise them at a very, very high level. All these things. So there you go. Very, very busy man, Scotty McClure, you know. Um, so there you are. Yes, we need to look at the live calls. But again, we need to get the pennies in. I don't need big, big money. I don't need millions and millions and millions of pounds. But I need everybody to stick in a couple of quid. See, Scotty McClure has been entertaining me for 25 years. I think he's worth a couple of quid. I'll give him a couple of quid. Hi, Scotty. Please ask my son Duncan to stop jumping on the hotel bed and go to sleep, says Vivian Scotson. Very wise, Vivian. I hope you're keeping up your beautiful singing. So there you are. Excellent stuff. Um, I loved watching your live stuff. Uh, one day at a time, sweet jeans, says Rab Hill, absolutely. HMRC um, tax fags and beer heavily. Tot, 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 Her Majesty's officers, says Lenny Hughes. I know we had somebody arguing with me this week about the royals. How do we know how much tax they're actually paying in that? She owns the tax. So they are it's Her Majesty's revenue and customs. Uh, so Boris is still at it, Scotty. 350 million a week for the NHFs after Brexit. I think it'll be 350 billion, 
So there you are. But what we're seeing there, Ian, I think it would be a nice gesture if Boris said, I firmly believe this, guys, so I'm now going to ask Mrs May to give the NHS $350 million a week's money uh, this week. So there you are. Good evening, Scotty. How's life, says Kevin Wibley? Kevin, life is absolutely fantastic. The only thing is we were so busy earlier that we broke the internet. So they got, just went, it just got stuck. Uh, plenty of rooms in Buckingham Palace, Sandringham, Windsor, uh, and Balmoral for the homeless, says Alfred James Wright. Alfred James Wright, sadly, you are wrong. And it pains me to tell you that, because I'm a big fan of yours. But none of these rooms would be suitable for the homeless. I don't know if you've ever actually stayed in a palace or lived in a palace. I've been invited to palaces and castles and things like that and stayed in these places. And they are very, very challenging. They're usually freezing cold. They're very, very uncomfortable. And they are highly impractical. So don't have that idea in their head. The Queen also doesn't own these houses. We do. These are national assets, right? So we could decide what happens with them. But it's lovely to have Buckingham Palace as the headquarters of the state. It's very good. It impresses the rest of the world. So never, ever, 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 ever talk down Her Majesty and uh, Prince Philip and the royal family. Never, ever, 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 ever talk down our national assets. And what would you do with the money if you sold them? You'd invest in property in SW1, because that's probably one of the best investments at the moment. I don't know what will happen post-Brexit, but right now, everybody wants to invest in property in SW1. So there you go. Brexit could change all that. We could run into poverty. Who knows? Uh, that was you, was it? Must have had a lot of traffic. I know. Scotland, what did you make of the Diana Memorial? Did you see it? Yes, the one, uh, the work of art. Work of art. I know what you mean. So there we are. So, Alfred James Wright, I love your sentiment. And uh, I'm sure the late Prince of Diana would have loved the idea. But um, th these palaces and castles are highly unsuited uh, for homeless people. They would make them very, very anxious and um, are probably very, very ill actually with anxiety how's mr martin says adam fuller haven't spoken to the old fool for years scotty go to jail go directly to jail do not pass go do not collect 200 pounds if you keep up the monarchy nonsense says ian walker no 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 ian you're missing the point here the monarchy doesn't come into the independence argument so last week a number of yesers lost the plot with me and it showed them up in a very very poor light you see because i want independence for scotland and uh, if you interfere with the crown it will not happen so it needs everybody respecting the royal family the crown and the monarchy then we can look from a parliamentary point of view about independence for scotland so the two are not connected. So the yesers need to not get themselves in a state over the monarchy, right? A republic is not happening. Law, you're as mad as your bonnet, says Ian Walker. So there you go, excellent. Right, Scotty, shut your eyes, think of a number between uh, zero and 10, and I will guess it. Okay, Rab Hill, I've thought of it, I have thunked. Come up with it, there you are. The Royals do a great job, look at the Queen, still working, says Steve Burrows, yes. And very, very full schedules as well. How do you know Mike Graham? We have a friend in common, says Christopher James Matt. I know Mike Graham extremely well. Um, I worked very closely with Mike um, when we were at Top 107 in Edinburgh together. So there you go. So I know Mike extremely well. First class journalist, super guy. Very, very clever man. Give him my regards. Uh, will she still take the tax money then, Scotty, says Lenny Hughes. She doesn't take the tax money. The, we pay out 52 pence a year each for the monarchy. That goes to run the royal household. Yeah? And it goes to keep up the, uh, the state houses. So there you are. The Queen is her own lady. She works extremely hard. And, of course, she gets her salary from the civil list. All right? Will do, says Christopher James. Good man. Uh, Rab Hill says six. You're one out, Rab. It was seven. 
I like the Queen. She reminds me of my granny. She always wore blue too. Maybe we are related, Sandy Thompson. Yes. And just to dispel other myths. Dispel them. And dispel them. Did you like that? Friday in there. Um, what we've got there, people come on and they go, yes, yes, they're German, they're German. Just a lot of absolute nonsense. Queen Victoria's daughter married Fritz William, the Emperor of Prussia. They are Frederick, Friedrich William, Wilhelm. Yes, and then their son was the Kaiser. All right, so what Prince Albert wanted to do was tie up all of Europe with crowned heads so that we would have an early EU. Excellent stuff. Um, and uh, I liked his thinking, big, big thinking, big thinking guy. Jamie died um, in his uh, early 40s. Uh, Scotty, there's a program about Victoria today when Britain was starving. She held a big fancy ball, lavish party. Her dress cost £45,000 in the 1800s. No, it didn't, Ian. Don't talk absolute bunkum. Having said that, um, they would be a little bit out of touch. It wasn't until Edward VII, Bertie, Queen Victoria's eldest son, the Prince of Wales, W.E. Gladstone, uh, who was, of course, a liberal, which was as left as you could be in this country in those days, took him out to see the hovels in London. And he was about to throw down uh, a handful of sovereigns. And he said, I beg you not, sir, they will tear us to bits. So there you are. So yes, a lot of poverty, and a lot of poverty in the 1930s as well. But these are separate budgets, completely separate budgets. I mean, that's like turning around and say, why are we spending money on defence at all? Why not just give it to the poor? The poor will always be with us. If you removed the monarchy, that would not change one thing. That would not help your food banks. In fact, it's even better when you get the prefix royal on everything because it shoves up the status of it. Shh, I've not seen tonight's Victoria, says Angie. But there we are. I'm still out of touch with Ian Walker. No, Ian Walker again. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. They're very, very much in touch, right? Very, very much in touch. And of course, uh, Prince William and Prince Harry, very much in touch with the challenges that this country faces. And of course, they're apolitical, which is fantastic. What's happened is a lot of the poverty in this country is a direct result of uh, conservative policies over the last 10 years. Oh, we've learned about Gladstone in history, hence the Gladstone bag, says Angie Thompson. Yes, he was a Scotsman, Angie, um, from Fask House up at Edsel in Angus. They are the Gladstones lived there. And W.E. was just one of them, William Ewart Gladstone. And you had a turnaround um, of uh, a Prime Minister, a bit like Wilson and Heath, that sort of idea, and Churchill in the in the uh, 50s, 40s and 50s. Um, and Gladstone was in and out of power, Gladstone and Disraeli. And uh, the Queen, the Queen, Queen Victoria, was not a fan of William Ewart Gladstone. She, she, you and I, Mr. Gladstone. So they didn't really go on. She loved Disraeli because Disraeli flattered her a lot. Dear, dear madam, I do hope I haven't inconvenienced you in any way, madam. All that sort of stuff. Whereas Gladstone was a bit more forthright, being a Scotsman. Um, okay, Scotty, what does Coat Bridge get from the Queen? So there, well, well, just like the rest of us, Coat Bridge is not singled out for any special royal treatment any more than the rest of the country. The royals bring us a sense of hope. So there you are. And Coat Bridge got a tremendous amount in its day. Um, the head of uh, the North British locomotive. So there we are. And of course, everything had royal on it there. A shout out for Elaine, um, says John Donnelly. Absolutely. Nobody wants them, nobody needs them, Scotty. You're showing yourself up as a tonko. Robert Bain, very, very much far from it. I'm just giving you the reality. If you want independence as much as I do, embrace the monarchy. Everybody wants them. Everybody needs them, except poor lost souls who don't understand how this country works. So there you are. Brilliant as always, Scotty. Cheers from Bonnie Rigg, says George McLashan. George, lovely to have you with us in Bonnie Rigg. Um, six, is that the number you were thinking of, says Rab Hill? No, Rab, I told you. Seven. So you were one out. 
There we are. Thanks for letting me play the blues guitar on your show in the 90s, Scotty. Good wee memories there, says Del White. Del, I remember it. Excellent stuff. Give everyone a fixed income like some countries are doing, and there will be no poor. Don't see any royals talking about food banks or even visiting one. Wrong, 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 again, Ian Walker. And as you know, William and Harry very often uh, pop out to Centre Point. Their mother did that as well, and uh, they are well aware. Also, things are quite frugal in the royal household. Amazing. And of course, during the First and Second World War, the heating was off. There we are. So a very, very tough time. Buckingham Palace got bombed. Why embrace them, says Neil Mills Jr.? Because that's what you want to do. Her Majesty the Queen is Her Majesty the Queen. That's how the state works. She's the head of state. So there you go. And um, so Scotland's never going to be independent without the say-so of Her Majesty the Queen. Happening, Scotty boy, your Scott FM show was the Vickers Knickers. It really was. That was Scotland's finest radio hour. I'm negotiating to see if we can bring that back, get the phones back, get the live radio. Lol, you're at it, says Ian Walker. Just telling you the facts, Ian. Uh, is Wolfgang coming back, says Steph? I hope so. Wolfgang, remember. Ha ha! Ha ha! Wolfgang, fantastic. They've done nothing for me, says Neil Mills. Neil Mills, they will have done more for you than you will ever no, because the royals are there into everything. Very often if you're in the hospital, you're in the Royal Infirmary, or you're in the Queen's Infirmary, or you're in the uh, Edward the Seventh Hospital, or something like that. Thought you were lying. I said seven, six days ago, says Rab Hill. Yes, did you? Say hi to Tracy for me, dinky do, says James Adamson. Hello, James. I don't like how Prince William's wife has been slated for being pregnant with her child. Victoria had nine. What's the problem? She's no one benefits, says Angie Thompson. No, absolutely. Three children, no problem. Three, four, we don't mind. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a distraction. I don't know why people get so hung up in the market. If you'd seen the dafties going bananas last week when I explained how the whole thing worked. So there we are. But I may have got a lot of the yesers to raise their game. And that's good. Uh, so there we are. Hello from Brazil, sir, says Jacob Michelson, Jacob. Jacob or Jacob? There we are. Vicky Navarro. You're looking well, Scotty. He kisses. So are you, Vicky. Fantastic. Give that man of yours a big hug. I was listening to his broadcast yesterday and it is outstanding. Nobody, nobody could present a breakfast show like that man of yours. So there you are. Fantastic. Loads of countries have left the Commonwealth and survived, says Lenny. Yes, of course, because they're in the Commonwealth. So the Queen is still very much a mainstream figure, holding the world together. She is the adhesive for the world. She is the catalyst for good. So there you are. So absolutely. And when Scotland leaves, um, you know, they will stay in the Commonwealth. So you're saying, sorry, you're saying countries have left the Commonwealth. No, they haven't. The Commonwealth countries are still in the Commonwealth. What they've done is they've left as crown colonies or protectorates. All right. Um, what are women doing commenting at this time, says Robert Bain? They should be tucking the kids in or making the man a savoury supper. There you are, ladies. What do you think of that? Is that misogynistic to say that you shouldn't be watching Scotty McClure, you should be tucking in the wains or making your man's tea? That's it. So that's what Robert's saying. Uh, Lenny says, left, I said, left, or oh, left, left the Commonwealth. No. No, they haven't left the Commonwealth. They're very much part of the Commonwealth. Look at the single mothers on benefits with six kids claiming benefits, says Steve Burroughs. I know there are a lot of things that are unfair, but then also the Tory cuts were a kind of one size fits all. So a lot of disabled people um, have really lost out big style. Right, so that's what we're talking about there. Now, what's going on? You're distracting me here, you lot. It's um, share time with Mr. Share Time. Can everybody get share, 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 share. Also, would you like to decide, would you like to choose who you are? Would you like to have dual citizenship, two passports, right? And instead of uh, having to go along with all this Brexit nonsense, then you could say, no, no, I'm staying in. I'm a European. Um, so there we go. 
uh, if you want a savoury supper, you'll have to get off his and make it, says Melanie MacDonald. Good answer, Melanie. Well done, darling. You stay watching Scotty McClure. And never mind these misogynists. So there you are. Is this live or wet, says Rab Hill. Wet, Rab. It's wet. It's live. They are live, Scotty McClure. Scottish, says Peter Ewing. Absolutely, Peter. Thank you very much, Peter, for your very, very kind contribution the other night to uh, PayPal. PayPal.me forward slash Scotty McClure, all one word. Uh, British Stoke Time, Lord Dual Citizenship, says Christopher. Yes, <coughs> marvellous stuff. Of course, you are talking to the first lord of the internet. Um, I was a little bit miffed that somebody else got the next Doctor Who, because I think I would have made an excellent Doctor Who. So there we go, wonderful stuff. Also, if you're looking for a proper radio station these days, then, uh, you know, you could uh, look no further than Great Yorkshire Radio. So if you're watching right now and you happen to be in Yorkshire, then obviously Great Yorkshire Radio is your local radio station. But if you're in the rest of the world, you can get on to greatyorkshireradio.co.uk or you could tweet them at Great, with a capital G, Yorks, with a capital Y, Radio, with a capital R. Look up the Scotty McClue video on Great Yorkshire Radio because I stumbled upon it and it is a quite fantastic, outstanding radio station. Lots of personality. Uh, it's a country of sanctions, Scotty. Everyone's getting punished. Right, left and centre. Yes, absolutely. A fair point, Ian. I have to go along with you there. Too many sanctions. No, thank you, says Peter Ewing. No, thank you for what, Peter? What are you saying no thank you to... Do you not want any tea? Or do you not want a lady to uh, make you? Hey, up, Chalk, says Ian Walker. Hey, up, Ian. Ian, I tell the lad, uh, absolutely, you've let cat out bag now. Right, folks. <coughs> Pardon me. Haven't had a drink of water. I think I should have got some summer. I think I brought some up. Anyway, doesn't matter. I'll no doubt get that in a minute. Uh, what I was going to say to you is uh, you're watching Scotty McClue. Share this video all week. We are building and building and building the World's Top Talk Show live on Facebook Live, the World's Top Broadcast Platform. Tremendous stuff. And I shall probably pop up on... Um, I shall pop up on uh, Twitter, on Periscope on Twitter. So you'll see Periscopes. Follow me on Periscope. Follow me on Twitter. Every single one of you go to at Scotty McClue. Uh, all one word, and follow me. Uh, thanks, Scotty. Great to see you, says John Hodgson. John Hodgson, one of the great talents on Great Yorkshire Radio. Tremendous man. Lovely to hear from him. Uh, no names, no adverts, says Robert Bain. What are you talking about, Robert? Of course we can have names and adverts, so there you are. If I wanted to advertise McClue's Pies right now, I would. I think you are forgetting the power of Scotty McClue broadcasting. Uh, get Pit boats on and take out the whippets for walk. Aye, get pit boats on and take out whippets for walk. That's it. Uh, dogs run away with the water to give to Mr. Fox. Ah, we Mr. Fox. Have you seen the latest, Angie? Two of them turned up one night. <laughs> Chattering away to me. Uh, so there we go. Fantastic. Aye, have you been down pit yourself like Ian Land? Aye. So there we go. Uh, right, uh, that's another wonderful thing. The miners, you see, England used to provide 75% of the world's coal, but we were too hard on Germany at the end of the First World War, the Treaty of Versailles, 1919, far too punitive. And we asked the Germans for cheap coal and, of course, cut off our nose to spite our faces. Uh, right, lol, says Ian, excellent stuff. Scotty, do you think a toff like Rhys Mogg would be a failure as a PM? <coughs> I don't think Jacob Rees-Mogg would be a failure at anything he touches. Because what you've got there is a very understated man in my view. Right? He knows absolutely every day. Uh, as far as I understand it, he had a city career. And uh, he did very well for pennies. He's married to a delightful lady who's, um, you know, very aristocratic. And a member of one of England's great old families. 
So they are going back <coughs> for uh, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. A very very nice family actually, and um, you know I know uh, I know a lot about his wife's family. So there we are, and of course I remember his father uh, when he was uh, editor of the Times and things like that. Uh, so there you are, William. Um, so, no, I, I think, um, as I say, Jacob Rees-Mogg strikes me as a very understated man. He's very clever, he's very funny, he's very gifted, and he's very able. He might not be everybody's cup of tea politically, but um, I think he'd probably make an excellent, uh, an excellent Prime Minister. So th there you go. Anyway, just a comment. That's Josh McClure giving an opinion, sticking his tuppence worth in. You love foxes, but the royals hunt them. What about that, says Robert Bain. Um, well, I would say to the royals, please stop hunting the foxes because McClure loves them. So there you are. But it has gone on for many, many years. What was it? Oscar Wilde described it as the unspeakable in pursuit of the uneatable. So there we are. Although he was a great uh, man for hanging around with the aristocracy, I have to say. Alfred, no says Neil Mills. Uh, Hi Scotty, so sorry. I've just joined you, currently on the train from Wakefield to Barnsley. Had a great night in Wakefield. And you've just brightened me night up, Scotty lad. Your son, great to see your son as well, Lee. I have to say that on your way back to Barnsley. Lovely part of the world. Uh, stayed in Barnsley, went round the old pits, collected coal, sold it around the town. People used to shout, watch it, scargo. There's the polis. <laughs> so excellent. Yes, of course. Yes, Mr. Scargill, absolutely. Um, his wife keeps him puffed out after six kids, says Alfred James Wright. Um, Alfred James, you are uh, quite a man, quite a ma remarkable man. So there you are. Uh, to the postman, vote yes, says Peter Ewing. Uh, so there we are. So Lee Ferns just joined us on a train from Wakefield to Barnsley. How fabulous is that? And he's got the Scotty McClure broadcast. Just shows you the power of the internet, guys. We could be up to 2 billion of an audience. If we have 2 billion of an audience, I will request that you all stick in a quid. So there we are. Uh, cheers, Scotty, says Lee. Not at all, Lee. Lovely to have you with us. We welcome everybody from all over the world. Wherever you're watching Scotty McClure, do let us know. Do say, I say. Now, uh, gosh, I can't believe how quickly the time has flown tonight. Guys, we've only got minutes. Now, at the end of the show, every one of you gets sharing. As soon as the little video pops up, share, 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 share. And uh, stick some money in to go fund me and help to build the shows. And a couple of tight wads on this week going, was it was it for again? You know, a man with money yourself and all that. I haven't any time for that kind of nonsense. If you don't want to give anything, don't give anything. Okay, but uh, but uh, stick your head up your backside and blow your nose till the pressure equalizes. That's what I say. Don't try that at home now, of course. That was for entertainment purposes. Watching in Manchester. Excellent. Ah, Manchester, lovely stuff. Scotty McClure used to stay Salford like, you know. Uh, should real Scots boycott Spain and Spanish products due to the disgraceful treatment of Catalonia, Scotty? Well, I think these countries like, um, you know, Westminster and uh, Spain, uh, you know, the, the Spain's changed dramatically beyond recognition. Remember, it had Franco since the Second World War. So there we are. Franco was there. Um, but... Um, no, I think they're panic-stricken that uh, that these powerful minorities take self-government. I remember you when you were on Hallam FM, South Yorkshire, Mrs. Scotty. So the Hallam FM, fabulous radio station. Fabulous. Hallam FM. They used to all ring in. There are another great show, Scotty, says Steve Burrows. Uh, all the best, mate, says Mike Waddle. Mike, lovely to have you with us. Dinky do to you, I say. Uh, you can't go. You owe us more time because you froze. Says George Raffin. George, I didn't personally freeze. The internet froze because you lot had mobbed it. So you need to take responsibility for that. There you are. Lord knows how we'll get on when there's two billion watching. Um, what are you going to buy? Uh, what am I going? Why should people part with their hard end just because you say so? Says Robert Bain. Well, Robert, you sound a bit of a mini. So uh, you know you don't have to part with your hard end. But what I'm going to do? I take little bits of advertising 
and um, I also uh, buy little bits of equipment which uh, come in handy and we're wanting to improve the broadcasts maybe get myself uh, I, I hope my camera's not listening here but a slightly better camera slightly slightly better so there you are that sort of stuff so that's what we're buying but uh, but please don't you part with it because you need it more than me uh do you take bitcoins scotty i've got wee bits of coins as you yes absolutely you stick in what you've got ian uh just went through the tunnel so i'll say it again hallam fm and south yorkshire misses you lee fern we got it don't worry it was you that missed it because you were in tunnel like we're live on internet so there we are i ah, internet that's what i say how are we doing for time i'm just trying to Make sure that we don't go over time for uploading. No, we're all right. We've got a couple of minutes, guys. That's fabulous. Let's use it well, and let's use it wisely, I say. You've uh, been watching Scotty McClue, the world's top talk show, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, officially. Tell ten to tell ten to tell ten to tell ten. Tell a hundred, tell a thousand, tell a million. That's what I say. Uh, stick a few quid in if you can do, guys. Uh, so there you are into gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue or pop on to scotty mcclue's website the official website www.scotty hyphen mcclue.com and you'll see the logos up there for paypal and for gofundme you can click on them and they will sort you out uh, what are you doing in a tunnel at this time of night says ian walker i'm not in a tunnel right so there you are your man on the train mr fern lee he's in tunnel Right, so get the Royals to fund you. Yes, I'm quite sure they're very welcome to fund me, but, I mean, throwing away comments like that and all that. Remember that the reason you don't like the Royals is through pure ignorance, and also you have chips on your shoulder. You're what we call a chippy person, and that's never a good way to approach politics. Um, so there you are. Do you still do the clock? Scotty McClue Mega Mix. I love that, says Lee. I think the Mega Mix is actually up on Scotty McClue's YouTube channel. If every single one of you Googles Scotty McClue YouTube channel, then you will get the treat of your life. Scott FM misses you more. Never mind the Yorkshire Dale. Stick with the squinty bridge, says Robert Bain. Good sound advice, Robert. I go along with you as well. What's your secret for having such a lovely complexion? says Lynn Kay. My uh, secret is having beautiful women tell me that, Lynn. What it does is it just makes me glow. Makes me glow, darling. Uh, excellent stuff. I do need to lose a little bit of weight, though, you know. I'm very fond of the pies, McClue's pies. Uh, Scotty, bring out a record. Scotty McClue's Scottish medley. Yes, that would be a massive seller. Do you remember the video? I think we sold about uh, 36, 40,000 videos. I can remember that um, I turned up at, um, at Menzies, as it was. It was Menzies that they were selling them in Glasgow and Edinburgh, and the queues were right round the corner for signing them. And I remember saying to a friend of mine, I said, well, there must be something on here tonight. This place is busy. He went, what do you mean? This is for you, McClue. So there we are. He wears peanut butter and uh, la, 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 la. Is that right? Is that a song? Fantastic stuff, right there. You oh, I see. Yes, that's why I've got a complexion. Yes, I was thinking of um, you know a song she wears red. Da, 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 da. Uh, Scotty, yes, absolutely. So there we go. So we can look at all that. Very, very important. Now, after I've gone tonight, guys, sharing, 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 sharing. Do your bit. Never, ever, ever, ever say assuming a clue why am i bothering with him for right because this is for you i might be presenting the program just to give us a wee start as they say you know what i mean i might be presenting the program but it's your program it's our program so there you go nobody can take it away from us um what's uh who's your all-time hero scotty says callum it's one my music teacher fantastic you taught in africa for uh, for 20 years tremendous stuff and uh, he taught some very very famous people but he's one of my all-time heroes i think um loved terry wogan of course wonderful man great broadcaster and um, had hoped i might get the breakfast show on radio too when uh, sir terry retired but that was not to be but there we are but who knows there's something big on the horizon i can tell you that 
Mold my clues about? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you signed my video, says Ian. Absolutely, and you must have been just a wee tooty lad. Yorkshire Dales. Scotty used to be based in Sheffield, Alum FM Studios, on Harry's Road. Oh, God, that were over 17 years ago, says Lee. And you know, Lee, one of the most rewarding things was, uh, you know, on a weeknight, standing in Hallam FM with the output going out on the speakers in reception and looking out the door of an autumn evening uh, across at Hillsborough, Sheffield Wednesday, and uh, listening to the cheering and the clapping and the thumping and all the rest of it, and of course the fabulous commentary that we got from our sports guys at Hallam FM. Outstanding radio. Outstanding part of the world. Hi Scotty, how's it hanging me old friend? This is Frank Crumby. Well, very personal question Frank, but fine, thank you. Great to see you on Facebook Live, says Mark Dow. Nearly lights out, says Ian. Harry's Road, says Lee. Hi, Harry's Road, that was it. The old town brewery. Hi, you're up at Radio Allen, aren't you, Scotty? That's it. Uh, better get the well is on. The shipping forecast will soon be on. Soon Walker. There we are. Dogger 4. So there we go. Tremendous stuff. The shipping forecast. I wouldn't mind a go at presenting that. Maybe do a one night. Tonight, Scotty McClue presents the shipping forecast. Uh, so there we are. We miss you, Scotty, says Lee. I know. Listen, I loved it down there. And do you know, when I went back down a few years later, Lee, the office phone rang and I picked it up and I said, Hello, Hallam FM. And this lady went, Hang on a minute, are you him? I said, Am I who, love? Him, that Scotty McGlue. Oh, my husband loves you. <laughs> it was fantastic. Right, come on, you're kidding on Mr. Boss, says Ian Walker. Yes. Uh, are we going to get a McClue autobiography, says George Raffin? Would you like one? That's the thing. You also have to listen to chapter one of my thriller, Deliver Us From Evil. Get onto YouTube and put in Scotty McClue reads Deliver Us From Evil. That's your bedtime reading, by the way. So get on with that, you lot. And if you want an autobiography, you'll get one. Would you come to an evening with Scotty McClue? Ponder that and let me know next week. Right, I have to dash. Good to see you looking so well, Sir Peter Ewing. Thank you very much, Peter. And great to hear from all of you, from Peter Ewing and from every single one of you throughout the world. Have a fabulous week. This is Scotty McClue saying God bless you. Dinky do to every single one of you. I'll see you all next week. We'll probably pop up during the week. Get Go funding me. Get your two pounds in there. So no, it is worth a couple of quid. All that sort of stuff. Get sharing and sharing and sharing. Do your bit for the universe. That's what I say. Scotty McClure says goodnight to you. Dinky doo. I'll sing you the song. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of wheat or zane, au revoir, and a chili oh. Dinky-doo, Scotty McClure has left the building. Oh, yes. <laughs>